Welcome back viewers for this week's technical video. Remember, if you haven't already, click subscribe and if you make it to the end of the video, give it a thumbs up. Now, sheep are notorious, especially amongst sheep farmers, for one thing in particular, and that is dropping dead, particularly without warning. But what do they actually die of? And can we do anything about it? Enter the Animal and Plant Health Agency, or APHA for short. This is the government agency responsible for, you guessed it, animal and plant health. And they have a number of veterinary investigation centers around England and Wales. They then collaborate with SIUC in Scotland to do much the same thing. Farmers can submit whole carcasses or individual samples to these centers for highly subsidized and therefore very good value testing and post-mortems. This gives the APHA a great handle on the diseases affecting the livestock of Great Britain. Even better, this information is made publicly available through something called the Sheep Disease Surveillance Dashboard. It brings up this map and as you can see on the right hand side it has a number of different diagnoses and then to the right of that a number indicating how frequently those different diagnoses were made. So we can use this to see what the biggest sheep killers were, at least of those animals submitted to the APHA, and then armed with that knowledge perhaps we could prioritise our preventative animal health measures accordingly. If you really want to drill down into the results you can break it down by age of animal, you can break it down by county, by region, by month of the year and year itself. I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to use all classes of stock across the entirety of Great Britain and I'm going to look at every complete year for the years that we have available. So that's 2012 to 2022. And if you don't like sheep, there are also dashboards for cattle, for pigs and for birds. So let's look at the top three in reverse order. Coming in at number three with 2,369 diagnoses is something called chronic fasciolysis. And I think I've said that right to your non-vet, that is chronic liver fluke. Now, as most of you will know, there are certainly liver fluke treatments available, but with increasing pressure on triclobendazole and the subsequent resistance, we're starting to see limited options. Nonetheless, monitoring liver fluke in sheep is still a really, really important thing to do. We can treat them accordingly. At number two, we have this thing called abortion slash phytopathy. Enzootic. Now that is enzootic abortion of ewes, EAE, also called chlamydial abortion. I think this is a really, really promising area of improvement. In fact, I think it's the most promising of all of these three today. That's because, first of all, the stakes are high. This is a really devastating infection when flocks get it. You see these abortion storms with potentially upwards of 30% of ewes aborting in late pregnancy. You also get lots of weak lambs which need a lot of care. Add to that that an outbreak needs lots of antibiotics to solve it, that it comes with massive financial and psychological stress on the farmer, and that an outbreak often gets worse in its second year. Finally, and most importantly, this poses a very, very real threat to pregnant women. It can make them very sick and cause the tragic loss of an unborn child. I'm not very good at being serious, but this warrants it. So the stakes are high, and second of all, this is a reasonably straightforward disease to control. We have a very effective and cost-effective vaccine available. Add that to a bit of biosecurity and we're basically there. The most common way for enzootic abortion to enter a flock of sheep is to buy in infected females. If you're buying in replacement females, I encourage you strongly at the next possible opportunity to talk to your vet about it, see what their thoughts are on vaccination, and if they recommend it, seriously, seriously consider it. If not for the sheep and your farm's bottom line, then for the health and the well-being of your lambing team, and that includes you. And finally, a number one with a greater number of cases than number two and number three combined, we have that arch nemesis of the growing lamb, parasitic gastroenteritis. Put simply, gut worms. This has a massive proportion of the diagnosed cases, 6,183. And by the time we add in the diagnoses related to specific species of worms like Nematodaris or Homonchus, this gets pumped up to nearly 8,000 cases. The important question I think to ask is why? We've had access to white wormers, the first real commercially available group of wormers since the 1960s. Since then, the range has only got bigger and bigger, and we understand more about gut worms 
than ever before. Different species, the life cycles of them all, and the other risk factors like trace element status and clean grazing. And yet we are still battling with this big beast. Resistance to a lot of the major worming products, which we've spoken about before, is no doubt a major part of the problem. But we really ought to, more than we currently do, step back from looking at this as a chemical issue. What other steps are we taking? Are we using genetics to select for sheep that are resistant to worms? How are we utilizing clean grazing and so on? So number one, gut worms. Number two, enzootic abortion. And number three, chronic liver fluke. There's a common theme across all three of these and that's we can do something about all three of them. Okay, number one and number three, we've got resistance issues to complicate the matter, but we should not kid ourselves into thinking that we're powerless to do anything about it. If you find yourself thinking that, go and talk to your vet about what you can do because there's always something you can do. One quick caveat before we go, the APHA are very keen to point out, and so am I, that they can only make diagnoses from animals that are presented to them. Now that might be slightly different to what's actually happening on farm. For example, sometimes the APHA themselves put calls out to vets for submission of particular samples like congenitally deformed lambs when they're looking for Schmallenberg. If they get more of those submissions as a result, that is going to artificially inflate the number of Schmallenberg diagnoses they make. Nonetheless, I still find these results really interesting and periodically we'll go back and have a look at these dashboards. And I encourage any farmer, any vet student to go and do the same. The links to those are in the video description. If you've never seen a sheep post-mortem and you're curious as to what that might look like on farm, here is a vlog to scratch that itch. That's it for this one. Remember to click subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Otherwise, catch you for the next one. Oh,